That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, we're going to do something a little bit different in this video. Please go down to the comment section. Let me know what you think about this video idea. I'm sure that somebody's going to come out and copy us like everybody always does. But nonetheless, we are going to be going through and we are going to be looking at the past three weeks from a fantasy football standpoint. And we are going to say, okay, who are the top scores at each position that have risen the most from the previous three weeks? Should we be looking to hold? Should we be looking to buy? Should we be looking to sell? Just because these players are skyrocketing right now in value. And of course, there are a lot of factors going into each player's movement. So we will be taking it on a case by case basis. But of course, before we dive into it, make sure you go down there, drop that like, subscribe to the channel, and leave that comment to get entered in to win a Fantasy Flock Network hat. We actually have to give away some hats right now. Our first hat being given away is coming out to Ethan, who says, told my friend Devonta Smith was a good play against Tampa Bay because of you. Ooh, I, I don't know who you're talking to. I, why, why would I ever say that? <laughs> Nonetheless, our next comment winner coming out from Swift Fusion says, my 6-0 record would look even better if I had a Fantasy Vlog Network hat on top of it. My friend, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Just send me that email ASAP with your physical address so I can get you those hats out. And yeah, I think that, oh, we have two more announcements. Go use promo code FLOCK on Underdog Fantasy. Make a $10 deposit. Go check out some really cool player props. Thomas, can you please put those on the screen for this video so those people can look at what those actually are? And then at the same time, you actually can get into some really cool fantasy football drafts. We'll be doing some more throughout the season on there as well. If you want to get in with us, that's a $10 deposit on Underdog Fantasy with promo code FLOCK. Go through the link in the live chat. Go through it in the description. That way you can make sure you are getting that max deposit bonus with promo code FLOCK. And also go check out our rest of season rankings over there on Patreon. On Patreon, you could find, I mean, rest of season rankings, get in a league with me, Q&A segments on our live streams. I mean, also you get our dynasty rankings, you get in our group chat. There's just a million things on Patreon y'all can go through and check out. And yeah, that's it. Let's start it off with our wide receiver Jamar Chase. That has been a top 10 option over the past three weeks. This is a receiver that... I mean, is literally only behind guys like Cortland Sutton, Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, Antonio Brown, Tyreek Hill. I mean, the usual suspects that you have. And with Jamar Chase over the past two weeks as well, you've had T. Higgins back in this offense. So, I mean, this production looks like it's at least staying there from a points per game standpoint. Now, if you're going to be looking at the volume that you have had for Jamar Chase in this offense as well, He's averaged eight targets over the past two weeks with T. Higgins back in. I mean, it looks like T. Higgins has really only been taking that target volume from Tyler Boyd. Now, of course, Tyler Boyd's a wide receiver that you really want nothing to do with at this point. But if you're going to go through and if you're going to look at how this offense has operated in general since T. Higgins has come back, I mean, Burrow had 29 pass attempts this week against the Lions, which that's a significant amount if you consider the fact that they beat the Lions 34 to 11. We know that with this Cincinnati Bengals offense, they really weren't looking to throw the ball with aggression at the beginning of the year. Joe Burrow also against the Green Bay Packers had 38 pass attempts. I believe that was most likely a season high for him. And this is a completely different way than what they're running this offense. Like just say back in week two against the Pittsburgh Steelers when they win 24 to 10 and they limit Joe Burrow to only dropping back and throwing the ball 18 times in a given game. So you are not only seeing the production for Jamar Chase trend in the positive direction, but at the same time, this overall passing volume in Cincinnati looks a lot more projectable going forward if you see the passing rate continue to have that drive up. And honestly, I think that it's something you possibly can look to expect, just given the fact with the Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Burrow, I mean, we know that he was coming back from a pretty devastating knee injury, so it probably was smart for this team, while yes, they were going, okay, well, Joe Burrow is going to go right when the season opens up, we can start him as our quarterback, you still don't want him dropping back 30 five plus times a game, knowing that he will be taking some hits by a very bad offensive line. This offensive line has been slightly more impressive. I mean, right now the Bengals are four and two. Keep in mind, they beat some pretty soft teams like Chicago. They beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. But with that being said, I think that if we're going to be looking at Jamar Chase in particular, this is a wide receiver that if we could pivot over, if we can get to someone that we're a little bit more confident with the floor and ceiling combination with, I mean, a sell that I think you could easily make right now would be going through and selling Jamar Chase 
for someone like Terry McLaurin. Now, y'all know with Terry McLaurin, this was not a wide receiver that I loved coming into the season. And Terry McLaurin, over the past three weeks, I mean, it's been almost the exact opposite of what you had with Jamar Chase, where Terry McLaurin's actually been the wide receiver 21 on a points per game basis. And this is mainly driven off of one week in particular against Atlanta back in week four. I mean, against the Saints, against the Chiefs, very down performances. But at least with Terry McLaurin, we've had a large sample of him dominating targets in his offense. I think that with T. Higgins here, he actually tied Jamar. Jamar Chase in targets a week ago. It looks like T. Higgins is working his way back into having that usual role that he did beforehand in that Cincinnati Bengals offense. So Chase looks fantastic. Chase is a 21-year-old wide receiver that was an elite prospect coming into the NFL draft. Clearly, he has that rapport with Joe Burrow. Clearly, he looks like he is a low-end wide receiver one right now, but in reality, I think he's more so a high-end wide receiver too. And I think if we could pivot over to someone like, oh my gosh, if you could get Calvin Ridley for him right now, that would also be fantastic. I mean, let me go pull up my updated rest of season rankings. And right now, yeah, we have Jamar Chase ranked as a high to mid wide receiver two. We have him ranked as the wide receiver 17. I would love to trade him for a wide receiver out of Tampa Bay and either Mike Evans or Antonio Brown. I would love to trade him for someone like Debo Samuel, who had almost 500 total yards through the first four weeks this season. Yeah, I think if you could make any of those pivots with Jamar Chase, we would. Not a player that you have to have to sell, but I still think we're probably going to be looking to move on from him. Now, our next wide receiver is Antonio Brown here, and we listed Antonio Brown as a sell-high wide receiver in our video this week. And I'm honestly surprised to see the feedback that y'all were saying. I mean, we had a lot of comments. Let me see if I can go through and try to pull one up on that last video. But we had a lot of comments saying that people in your leagues, they were just looking at Yahoo or whatever site y'all are playing on. And they were saying, oh, well, no, Antonio Brown's only projected to score 14 fantasy points. I mean, they're not going to be paying you anything for him. That's very surprising to me because based on the sentiment that I have had down there in the comment section, as well as in the live chat, it seems like Antonio Brown has his value through the roof. I mean, let me go through and let me pull up this comment. Yeah, Baca coming out says, there's no way I can sell Antonio Brown high to my fantasy league mates. They just look at his 14 point projection on ESPN and can't get past it. So yeah, that's kind of crazy for me because I'm looking at Antonio Brown and we're saying, okay, well, this is clearly at least a wide receiver that has the argument to be made that he's the wide receiver one in Tampa right now. You're looking at this Tampa Bay Buccaneers passing offense. It is the most efficient and highest volume passing offense in the entire NFL as well. If you're looking at what Tom Brady has done so far this season, it's kind of laughable how great Tom Brady has been at 58 years old. Right now, Tom Brady's leading the NFL in over 2,000 passing yards. At the same time, he's right up there with passing touchdowns as well, only behind Patrick Mahomes with 17. He has a very high adjusted yards per pass attempt mark at 8.5 adjusted yards per pass attempt. And with 267 attempts, that is a massive mark. I mean, you love the portion of this offense Antonio Brown's been able to carve himself out. So let me just put a little caveat on this. If you're playing a league where you can pivot over, you can get to a wide receiver that's going to be the alpha wide receiver target in his own offense. If you can go get to someone like DJ Moore, Justin Jefferson, I mean, I would even still have Terry McLaurin over him. And of course, it goes without being said, Calvin Ridley. I mean, if you go pull up my rest of season rankings right now on Patreon, you're going to see there's a reason why we keep on mentioning Calvin Ridley's literally a top five wide receiver for us rest of season. He is our wide receiver five right now. I have Antonio Brown ranked as a high end wide receiver two. We have him ranked at wide receiver 13, 14. And then I think if we could also pivot over to CD lamb, Debo Samuel, those would also be strong trade targets. But the problem is if y'all are telling me that in your actual leagues that you can't even get that value for Antonio Brown, I guess you just hold because this is a wide receiver that hasn't just been winning off of touchdown volume or anything. No, he's been fantastic in terms of the actual target volume that he has had as well in this offense. I mean, right now he's the wide receiver two over the past three weeks, only behind Tyree Kill. He's had 11 targets, eight targets, 13 targets after coming back off the COVID list. I mean, back in week three against the Rams. So yeah, you're really excited about what you'll have with Antonio Brown going forward. And I think that he's a high end wide receiver too. If you can sell for a wide receiver one, hell yes. I thought you would be able to, but I guess based on what y'all been telling me in the comment section, maybe you won't be. Now our next wide receiver, I mean, we called him a player that was a trade target earlier on in the year after you had the Jerry Judy injury, but now he is a clear sell high. Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton has been dominant as of late. And I'm going to be completely honest here. I'm recording this. 
before the Thursday night game. So I'd imagine that we get another strong performance from Cortland Sutton against the Cleveland Browns. But going into this Cleveland Browns matchup, he's had eight targets, 11 targets, 14 targets. I mean, in the production to go along with it, I mean, back a week ago against the Raiders, he had eight receptions, 94 receiving yards and a receiving touchdown against the Steelers. Keep in mind, he had an ankle injury this Friday. We didn't even know if he was going to be playing. I mean, seven receptions, 120 receiving yards and a receiving touchdown to go along with it. Sutton has been fantastic fantastic with what he's been providing you over the past few weeks with no KJ Hamler, with no Jerry Judy in this offense. Clearly, they've been fueling this offense through Cortland Sutton and Noah Fant. But I want to remind everyone that Jerry Judy will be coming back in a few weeks. Jerry Judy will be the wide receiver one for this Denver Broncos offense. So although Cortland Sutton has been surging in fantasy football right now, I still think Cortland Sutton will be a sell for us. If you go over to Patreon, pull up our rest of season rankings, you will see that I have Cortland Sutton ranked as the wide receiver 26. I have him directly behind players that I know he has been crushing as of late. Trust me, you don't even need to tell me this. I already understand. But a big thing is, if we're going to be looking at him versus T. Higgins, Robert Woods, who we currently have ranked ahead of him, you're at least looking at those as players that will 100% be playing in offenses that are more exciting than the Denver Broncos going forward. I mean, with Denver, I'm going to be expecting the passing volume to be a little bit lowered given the defense that you have for this Denver Broncos team. And that's how they are really trying to win these games. So even though I have Sutton at wide receiver 26, I know that seems like a little more. Tell me who I need to move him above. I can't move him above T. Higgins, but T. Higgins has the target volume. I think T. Higgins coming back from that shoulder injury will be able to take that step forward. Now, maybe just maybe you're going to tell me that Cortland Sutton here is not going to get that many targets taken away by Jerry Judy in this offense. But the problem is, I mean, if we go back to what we had in week one with Cortland Sutton here, and I know this is such a small sample, but still Cortland Sutton did only have three targets in this offense, a one reception, 14 receiving yards. Now I know it's a one week sample, but Jerry Judy on the other hand was incredibly impressive in this one week. Jerry Judy only played a half of football before that high ankle sprain. And he had seven targets, 72 receiving yards, and six receptions. Now, of course, it's a very small sample, as we've already discussed. But, I mean, our priors on Jerry Judy versus Cortland Sutton was Jerry Judy was the wide receiver one in this offense, I mean, coming into the season. So when we got that confirmed in the small sample, I'm going to be willing to buy into it a little bit more. But let me know if y'all think I'm just crazy in having Cortland Sutton ranked in the same tier as Robert Woods, T. Higgins, Hollywood Brown. The wide receivers I have ranked in the tier above Cortland Sutton. Now, these are the guys that are really above him. If they're in the same tier, it's kind of whatever. I mean, we have DK Metcalf, Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen. I have Devontae Smith over Cortland Sutton right now. I think that in the fantasy football playoffs, Smith will be a significantly better option. But please let me know what you are thinking. I know that's not going to be a popular opinion. I mean, I'm not even selling Sutton for those players, knowing that his fantasy value is definitely a lot higher than that, knowing that 9 out of 10 people value him in a range that he's actually up there with guys like Amari Cooper, A.J. Brown, Chris Godwin. I mean, I would love to trade Cortland Sutton for Chris Godwin, A.J. Brown, or Amari Cooper, because I believe more in the A.J. Brown talent profile, and I definitely believe a lot more in the Dallas Cowboys and Tampa Bay Buccaneers passing offenses. Now let's go over to the running back position and let's lead it off with a running back that has crushed over the past three weeks with Jonathan Taylor. Now, Jonathan Taylor, this is one of my most drafted running backs this season. Whenever we were getting him in the second round, we actually had him ranked as a late first round selection coming into the year. I mean, so far he's been the running back six on the year, but if you're looking over the past three weeks, he's been right up there at the very top, really only behind Derrick Henry. And if you're going to be looking at the role that he's been playing in this offense, honestly, the role hasn't changed that much. It's just that he has been one of the most efficient running backs in the entire NFL. I mean, if we're going to go through, if we're going to look at what you've actually had, I know this is not a great stat to look at, but if you're just going to be looking at his yards per carry, keep in mind, a very poor statistic because so much gets played in to what you actually have with yards per carry. I mean, you get the offensive line, the offensive game environment. I mean, it's not just running back talent. Of course, it's not running back talent. That's not what I'm saying. But still at the same time, if you're looking at the efficiency of what you have had with Jonathan Taylor, he's currently sitting at 5.4. The only other running backs that have had a consistent workload in this same range are James Robinson, Nick Chubb, I mean, I don't even want to consider Tony Pollard to Chase Edmonds because the volume hasn't been there. So it's essentially Robinson and Nick Chubb. And I think with Jonathan Taylor, yeah, he's a fantastic running back. The problem is, I think that the majority of this volume over the past 
few weeks hasn't necessarily been there. I mean, you have been seeing Marlon Mack. You've been seeing Naheem Hines consistently get snaps. I mean, a lot of this production's just based off what you've had with the touchdown category and that he scored four touchdowns. I'm sorry, five touchdowns over the past three weeks. It's hard to say to sell Jonathan Taylor, however, because he has the Titans in week eight. He has the Jets in week nine. He has the Jags in week 10. So I think we're going to be looking to hold Taylor for now. But then maybe after week 10, and I know this is a far ways out, but then maybe we look to sell just because Marlon Mack and Naheem Hines are taking touches away in this offense. Now, our next running back here will be someone that I'm not going to lie. I, I was not willing to buy into it after the first week we had him with the bell cow roll, but now clearly it's here to stay. Leonard Fournette. Now, Leonard Fournette, 20 carries in week four against the Patriots. I mean, 12 carries, four receptions against the Miami Dolphins in week five. 22 carries and six receptions against the Philadelphia Eagles in week six was the running back two on the week. Clearly, Leonard Fournette has risen the most in our rest of season rankings out of any other running back over the past three weeks. Now with Fournette, I'm not going to be ranking him as a running back one right now. And the reason for that is because last season we saw Bruce Arians be very wishy-washy with the running back usage that he had in Tampa. Now, I think mainly you can rely on Fournette to be the lead running back and most likely the three down player going forward. But at the same time, there's just a little uncertainty with Leonard Fournette. I currently have him ranked directly behind running backs like Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb, James Robinson, Joe Mixon. I have him ranked ahead of Antonio Gibson, Cordell Patterson, Josh Jacobs, Kareem Hunt, and Javante Williams. So I honestly don't necessarily think that you would be able to sell Leonard Fournette and get up to Nick Chubb or Jonathan Taylor or Daryl Henderson or Saquon Barkley or DeAndre Swift. So you're probably just going to be holding on to Fournette. And at the same time, I don't really think you're going to be able to trade away Antonio Gibson and go get him. So you're not going to be able to buy. So I think Leonard Fournette is probably a very strong hold at this point. Now let's go over to our tight ends that we need to discuss. Let's look at Mark Andrews to lead this off. And obviously Mark Andrews, Two weeks ago has one of the most impressive weeks of this entire season for a tight end. I mean, he dropped 45 points in the tight end premium format. I'd imagine that's probably the best week that you've had from a tight end this year, where he had 13 targets, 11 receptions, 147 receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns at the same time. Clearly, that's a league-winning player there if you were getting that just a few times in a season, especially in a best ball league. This past week, also a very strong performance with six targets. Five receptions, 68 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown. I honestly think Mark Andrews is going to be a sell for us, however. Just because if you're looking at Mark Andrews, I know for a fact you could trade Mark Andrews for TJ Hawkinson and get an upgrade at wide receiver while you make that play. I think Andrews and Hawkinson are literally neck and neck with what we are projecting for the rest of the season. I mean, right now I have Mark Andrews at tight end number four. We have Kittle and Hawkinson right after him. And the problem with Andrews is you're not expecting Lamar Jackson to continue to come out and average over 300 passing yards a game. And with Rashad Bateman coming in this past week, clearly Rashad Bateman is going to have a role in this offense and he will be taking targets not only from Hollywood Brown, but also with Mark Andrews. Now, I know this didn't really affect Andrews a week ago, but he scored the touchdown. And at the same time, you had no Sammy Watkins in this offense. So once Sammy Watkins is back and playing, then I think you have to be a little bit more concerned about the target competition for Andrews as well. Andrews has been fantastic fantastic over the past few seasons, but he's also been living in a world where he's competing with, for like Willie Sneed with Target. So I think that once we see Bateman coming back in, I will be looking to sell Andrews high. I think if we can pivot over, if we can get the TG Hawkinson in a wide receiver upgrade or George Kittle in a wide receiver upgrade, that'd be fantastic. Now, our last tight end we're going to talk about going right back to what we had with Corlin Sutton. I mean, we said that he was a buy low player at the beginning of the year, but now I think it's time to sell high. We're going to go Noah Fant. I mean, with Noah Fant, yes, he's been fantastic as of late. And I know that people get annoyed like what we just did with Corlin Sutton saying to buy low, ride out the production, sell at a higher price tag. But I think we're going to be looking to do the same thing with Noah Fant here. He's coming off a week where he had 29 fantasy points in a tight end premium league, 11 targets, nine receptions, 97 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown. Two weeks ago, he had 10 targets, six receptions, 46 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown at the same time. But like we've already discussed, Jerry Judy coming back in. Jerry Judy will be seeing over 20% of the team's targets. This is still an offense. I really don't want to be betting on for the long term with Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Locke as your starting quarterback combination. It's not going to be that great of a situation. I think with Jerry Judy coming in, it's going to be diluting the target share for pretty much Noah Fant, Cortland Sutton to a point where, yeah, you're still starting them, but you're not nearly as excited. So we are going to be looking to sell Noah Fant as well, knowing that you could just trade Noah Fant right now for TJ Hawkinson. Now, thank you. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. Please go down there. Make sure you drop that like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. It helps us out 
a ton. Go check out Patreon for our rest of season rankings. Get in a league with me. Get in our group chat. Get a podcast broken down about your fantasy team. I mean, there's so much stuff over there. Also, go use promo code FLOCK on Underdog Fantasy. Make that $10 deposit. Get a max deposit bonus. Support this channel that way. I mean, that is honestly probably better than Patreon. And at the same time, you get access to getting in leagues with us. as We're going to be doing them on the live streams. And also, you get access to some really cool player props. That's all I got for y'all. Really hope you had a great day and I really hope I see y'all with the video tomorrow.